up to workshop four. In this week we're going to be talking about literacy and numeracy. So I'm going to go over some stuff from mathematics, uh, Gapminder, GeoGebra. I'm going to go into some English stuff and literacy programs using Turnitin, Word and Schmoo. And I'll show you how to Google advanced search. So start off with three R's. Now these have changed over time. We originally that used to talk about reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now one of the things I find amusing, by the way, is the fact that reading is the only one that starts with that. The thing that we're starting to look at though is that digital literacy seems to be a fourth R. As in, students may be able to read, write, and and do their maths, but if they do not know how to use a computer, they can actually have trouble in modern day society. So uh, one of the people that I've worked with before, who works for um, disability services, has said that if a student cannot understand technology, they're actually going to put them into as, in a special needs group, and we're going to be creating a whole new branch of special needs students. Another thing I'll point out as well is that all students are special needs. You know, some students need to be taught normally, if that makes sense. Some need uh, uh, suffer from dyslexia or Asperger's. There's such a huge amount of different things that we have to worry about in classes today that it's almost weird to have a class of supposedly normal students. We talk about differentiation, which is where we're changing the, the delivery of the content, the content which, which we actually want to cover, and the assessment as well for differentiation. Now, one of the things you can do is if you differentiate your class to the point that every student is differentiated for, so you're developing individual learning plans for each student, then you do actually remove the need, the special needs. If a student is suffering from dyslexia, and you make sure that when you're delivering content to that student, you've taken into account their needs and differentiated the curriculum, the content, and the learning for that student, they're no longer a special needs student. Right? There is no such thing as gifted and talented or special needs for a student when you're comparing it to themselves. A gifted student is only gifted when you compare them to someone else. So if you set up an individual learning plan for each student, then you're covering all your bases. Okay, so first thing we're going to cover is mathematics and numeracy. Now mathematics, or mathletics, students learn, they progress from year level to year level, and say they're learning algebra, because here's, here's your first algebra question. The student can go and says to the student, do you want to do a tutorial on this? And the student says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a go myself. The student then tries it, they make a mistake. The, the technology says, You've made a mistake, would you like a hand? The student continues, no, 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 I'm fine. If the student makes too many mistakes, the tutorial program kicks in and says, you are making a fundamental error, let me explain how to do it. All right, so the program is in itself acting as an individual teacher. And the advantages of what the students are doing is just phenomenal. I've seen students who are struggling in year 10 to even do year six maths. You run them through uh, mathematics, starting them at year six, and they progress through all the training and learning and everything. And by the end of year 10, they are a poor year 10 student. Now that's not saying they're an outstanding student, but they've covered five years of maths in a year. So that's amazing. Uh, Mathematics has also Spellodrome and Grammaticus, which are some other software tools um, and they are very good at teaching them spelling and grammar although these are new versions. Now next thing I'm going to teach you about is GeoGebra. Now GeoGebra is you can download to uh, any, any computer whether it's a Mac, PC or whatever and you can see here, it's a graphics computer. Now I can select any point here, and it tells me what these points are. Right. Equally, I can do a line. Right. And it gives me the formula for that line. Now, you can imagine doing this in the class up the front, uh, and explaining to the students uh, what's going on. Right. Um, and, and the students can then use this to, to try and calculate what's got, um, the, the angles, points, um, pictorial, uh, whatever they need to do. You know, it's a great tool for teachers. 
have a play. If you're not a maths teacher, I feel free to move on. But if you're a maths teacher, download it, give it a go. You'd find it really useful. English. Now, can you please make sure you take this number down and this password? Turnitin is a hugely useful tool. You may be worried that students are plagiarizing material. Turnitin is a program that allows you to find out if that's true. So what we're going to do here is I've set up an account. So I'm going uh, to create an account. You can create an account as a teacher. Just put in email address and password and select that you're in uh, a teaching assistant or instructor is more important. All right, however, I've already created an account, so I'm going to log in. And what I've done is I've set up a class all right, for student teachers. So if I click on this class, and I can add other classes, I've set up a paper here. And if I go view, all right, I can see here that I can submit, I can submit files. So I can submit my files, but students can also submit their files. But here's one that I've done before. So I've uploaded these myself. This is a digital literacy person. And I can click on here, and it, and it says, all right, this is what the student has submitted. Now, this has got a 100% match to Wikipedia because I went and got it straight from Wikipedia. So I originally, I, um, initially I can find out if it's a match, all right, if someone's been cheating. I can also grade mark this or peer mark this. All right, moving back. Here, I've got uh, another student, all right, and I'm looking here. Now the good thing about turning in is anyone that's uploaded a file, it goes into the database, right? So testing in the database, and I can see here now that this one here, this has, so number one is linked to a student who submitted in Bridgeport. So if I go here, it says, this is what the person in Bridgeport wrote. Oh, um, however, because it's uh, submitted to Bridgeport Education, which is a different school, it says you need to, um, Find, get permission to be able to see it. However, I can see that some other students written it. Does it look like it's their exact writing? No, not really, because it, it's kind of taken off. This is exactly the same sentence, but that's a fairly vague sentence. So it's, maybe this person just happens to come up with the same sentence as the other one. This is one I just downloaded off the internet or I found. I did a word search and found acid rain. Acid rain is an exp is a essay that most people have to write when they're in year 11 biology, or sorry, chemistry. And normally it's about 500 words. You can imagine that if every year a million students are writing an essay uh, about acid rain, there's actually going to be no possible way of writing an in, uh, a non-plagiarised piece or, a, or your own unique piece of work. As they say about a thousand monkeys on a thousand typewriters. Well, a million students on a million computers with the intelligence to actually write about one particular topic, you're going to get uh, some overlap. But here I can see that these are a 5%, so if I click on this, Oh, well, that's a quote, so fair enough. It's from Discover Magazine, so that's giving me the exact quote. If I go to here, uh, well, it's a public resource. So this person, it's the quotes are coming up. Um, someone's coming up with a paper, right, and it's just in references. You can select that the references are turned off, right? I would not be worried about these 5% uh, because there can just be a random selection of uh, material. Uh, back to student teachers is go add an assignment. And here I can make it a peer mark assignment. So then the students are marking each other's work. Great way of going through your marking again and giving them each feedback. All right. So here, I'm in, uh, you, if you click up here on student, and I go enroll in class, put in the student ID, uh, which is uh, 7880702, and enrollment password is just Adelaide, all lowercase. All right, and that will get put you in my class, and then you can submit stuff and you can test it out. Otherwise, test it out for yourself. All right, and that's turning in. All right, next one I'm going to show you is Schmoop. So again, this is an English an English one. All right, now Schmoop is a great place to go for English teachers for um, textbooks, all right, so books and stuff. If we go to uh, Shakespeare, for example, here are all the uh, different Shakespeare things, and I'm going to go to Romeo and Juliet simply because is the one that everybody has to do in school. This is a nutshell. Uh, so it's actually asking questions about Romeo and Juliet. Not just telling you what goes on, but it's giving you information. So it's an introduction. And across here, I've got summaries. I've got what happens in the book. I've got I've got the themes. All right, and so you can discuss all the different themes that happen, the characters, the quotes, the analysis, whatever. Uh, it's even got built-in quizzes. All right, so you can do quizzes on this. Uh, however, also as a teacher, uh, see I've got how to write a good essay. As a teacher, this is costs extra money, 
but you can get in here activities assignments reading and one of the best ones here is discussion essay questions moving on from English to the next one all right gap minder this is one of my favorite pieces of work go away gap minder this was developed by Hans Rosling uh, oh, probably about 10 years ago now and he's using the information from sourced from the statistics from different uh, countries around the world okay so this is gapminder it's get www.gapminder.org and then when you get here go to gapminder world and you'll get to this chart now this represents uh, income per person against life expectancy each one of these different dots represents a country so here I've got United Kingdom the color represents that part of the world the size represents the population so 1802 1803 Right, I can actually have a look at how this has changed over each successive year. But what's really cool is if I hit play. Right, now this is going through year by year and you can see the slow shift in uh, life expectancy and amount of funds that you can have um, at any particular time. Now, just to give you something really interesting, this here is Australia. We were, in 1875, the richest people in the world. Now I've got that switched on now, so as I continue on, it will track the progress of Australia. Switch that off. All right, moving on. I'm just gonna slow this down a bit. So you can see life expectancy going up, going to, now somewhere you see it drop because of the First World War, going back up again. Uh, it drops again because of the Second World War. And we can see everyone's starting to go up, moving up, everyone's living longer, we're earning more. You can see China moving around, change the first work, uh, one baby policy, moving up as we get higher. You can see the blue, which represents all of the Africa. 80s, we see a drop in life expectancy um, due to uh, HIV and AIDS ep epidemic. And you can see it goes right up to the top corner. Now, what a beautiful way of drawing upon graphs and data. Now, this is maths, but it's also geography, history, all that stuff. People, could, the students can take screenshots of each of these. Uh, they can up, try and understand what's going on, and it gives them an understanding of what's going on in all parts of the world at once. I'm going to show you how to use Word. If you're using a Word program, first of all, if you hold down Control and Command on a, on a Mac and scroll this wheel, you can see it makes it bigger and smaller. One of the things that you're going to have to be doing is making lots of worksheets, probably. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Left tab, change this to right, and we put in a right tab here. Now, if I do underline, all right, let's control, hit tab, I can do lines. Okay, the other good thing is I can do uh, three marks. The other thing I'm gonna show you on here, which is really important, is track changes. Okay, track changes will track changes while you're doing them. So. Here's a, let's assume this is a document that a student sent me, and I go, well, no, it's not Romeo. This should have actually been Juliet. Now, immediately it's come over here and it says, you've made a change, all right? So I, if I'm correcting any student's work or, or doing anything like that, then it can see, the student can then say, oh, no changes to this. You can also then add in comments. So if I go to review, I go new comment, I'm gonna say in here, uh, make sure you check. Now, up here under the review, I can change this final showing markup. So I can change it to the original. So it goes back to the stuff that they showed me originally. Or I can go to the final. This is what I've changed it to, right? Or I can show, include the markup. So if you're drafting year 12 work or year 11 work as part of SACE, you may wish to send, get them to send you a, a file that you can then check and edit. And it will track the changes as you go along. It's a really useful tool. Uh, and it means that you can see what you've, what changes you've made and what changes they've made as well. Discussion board questions this week. Should ICT be considered as important as the three R's? I want you to choose one of the programs that I've used and comment on whether or not you think it's useful or not. It's just the idea that you're actually researching the tools as we're going along. And then lastly, do you think the role of the teacher has changed and moves as we move um, from industrial to the information age? In other words, is the teacher still the deliverer of content or has that changed? The National Professional Standards that we've covered here is uh, Standard 1, 2, and 5. So know the students, know the content, and think about assessment and feedback. But this week, we're going to be working on Standard 1. 